One of Ramachandran's first patients was Derek Steen. Thirteen years ago, I was involved in a motorcycle accident, and I pulled the nerves out of my spinal cord up in my neck. They told my parents directly that I would never use my arm again. About seven years ago, I was reading through the classifieds, and I saw an ad in there, uh, amputees wanted. I thought it was a joke. Like that. It's just basically connecting the club to the ball. So I called the number, and it was Dr. Ramachandran. Today, Derek is teaching Ramachandran how to play golf. But several years ago, Derek made a crucial contribution to Ramachandran's pioneering work in brain science. Yes, that was amazing. <laughs> After my surgery, I sat up in the bed and still felt the arm there, still felt everything there. And I'm looking down and I'm seeing nothing. <laughs> it was pretty bizarre. The more I thought about it, the more it hurt. The more it hurt, the more I thought about it. So it was, it was like, it was never ending. I mean, I'd break out in a cold sweat and turn pale just standing here talking to you because the pain would hit so bad. If there is any one thing about our existence that we take for granted, it's the fact that we have a body. Each of us has a body and, you know, you give it a name, it has a bank account and so on and so forth. Uh, but it turns out even your body is something that you construct in your mind. And this is what we call your body image. Now, of course, in my case, it's substantiated by the fact that there really is a body with bone and tissue. But the sense I have, the internal sense I have, of, of the presence of a body and arms and all of that is, of course, constructed in my brain and it's in my mind. And the most striking evidence for this comes from these patients who have had an amputation and continue to feel the presence of the missing hand. It was the beginning of an important relationship. Important for Derek, because not only would he finally understand his phantom pain, he would also get to the bottom of a mysterious sensation he felt while shaving. When I first started shaving after my surgery, I would feel my absent hand start to hurt and tingle whenever I shaved this left side of my face. Meeting Derek was important for Ramachandran because the explanation he came up with would rock the world of neuroscience. How about that? That's just my arm. The first thing Ramachandran did was to invite Derek to his lab for a simple test. Derek, I want to touch different parts of your body, and I just want you to tell me what you feel and where you experience the sensation, okay? Okay. Close your eyes. You could feel that on my forehead. Anything anywhere else? No. Okay. It's on my nose. Okay. My chest. Your chest, okay. I can feel that on my cheek and I can feel rubbing on the phantom left hand. On the phantom left hand, mm -hmm. in addition to your cheek. I'm going to run the Q-tip across your jaw and see what happens. I can feel a Q-tip on my cheek and I can feel a stroking sensation across the phantom hand. You actually feel it stroking across your phantom hand, mm -hmm. across the palm. So here is a medical mystery of sorts. Why does this happen? Why would a person, when you touch his face, claim that I was also touching his missing phantom fingers. That's fine. Palm. Phantom palm. This was just the kind of mystery that Ramachandran was drawn to. Although it would take some time to solve. One day, while Derek was making one-armed repairs on his favorite Chevy, Ramachandran turned up with his solution. It was a groundbreaking theory. The reason we think it happens is that in the brain, there is a complete map of the surface of the body. The entire left side of my body, the skin surface, is mapped on to the right side of my brain along a vertical strip of cortex, which we call the somatosensory cortex. Similarly, the right side of my body is represented on the left side of my brain. So every point on your body surface has a corresponding point on this body map. Now it turns out that the representation of the face on this map is right next to the representation of the hand. Now that's a bit surprising, as you'd expect the map to be continuous and faithfully represent the left side of my body. But it doesn't. 
Now imagine what would happen if the left arm were amputated. The part of the brain corresponding to the hand no longer gets any input and it's hungry for new sensory input, so to speak. The sensory signals from the face normally activate only the face area that's right next to the hand area. But they now invade the vacated territory corresponding to the missing hand and start activating the hand region in the brain. And so whatever is reading those signals higher up misinterprets those signals. It says, those signals are coming from the missing hand. So you experience the sensations as coming from the missing fingers, even though I'm touching your face. And this is showing there's been a massive reorganization of the sensory pathways in your brain after the amputation. And it's as though there's been a cross wiring in your brain. Which... Exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah. At first, some members of the neuroscience community scoffed at Ramachandran's new theory that neural pathways in the brain can change. One of the dogmas in neurology has always been that connections are laid down in the fetus in an early infancy. And once these connections are laid down, there's nothing you can do to change them. As a scientist, Ramachandran knew that such a radical proposal needed scientific proof. It was time to give Derek a brain scan. Hopefully, this would show what was actually going on in his brain. But would it prove that Ramachandran's hunch was correct? When various parts of Derek's body were wired up, the corresponding activity in his brain revealed the layout of his body map. This is a scan of Derek's brain. The green spot shows the brain's response to the stimulation of Derek's existing right hand. Next to it, the red spot shows that the right side of Derek's face is also being stimulated. So far, everything is normal. But in the right hemisphere, the green spot has disappeared because Derek's missing left arm can no longer send signals to his brain. Remarkably, the red area, which corresponds to his left cheek, has now taken over the whole space. These results vindicated Ramachandran's detective work. It's as though now the sensory input from the face is innervating a completely new part of the brain. And this means new pathways have been opened up. Whether this is because there's been an actual sprouting of new nerve fibers, or there have been pre-existing silent pathways, which are now suddenly active, we're still working on. We suggested that maybe the connections are already there, like reserved troops ready to be called into action. And when you amputate the hand, these latent connections suddenly become active. Phantom sensations do not only occur in the limbs. But in fact, you can get a phantom with almost any part of the body. You can get phantom menstrual cramps after hysterectomy. You can get phantom appendix pain even after the appendix has been removed. Theoretically, you could have a phantom of almost any part of the body, except, of course, the brain. You can't have a phantom brain by definition, because that's where we think it's all happening. 